is the Rebel Author Podcast, where we talk about books, business, and occasionally bad words. Hello, Rebels, and welcome to what is actually the Black Heron episode 25. Last time was episode 24, and I think I introduced it as episode 25. So I hope you enjoy this, not in person, but nonetheless, uh, fireside chit chat with me and Rachel. Well, hello, Sasha Black. Hello, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Look How at are you? we? Home from the wars. <laughs> oh my goodness me. And I'm still like, I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm a little bit husky still because um, I went to Sweden this last weekend uh, to the Stockholm Writers Festival and I talked <gasps> all weekend and it was a lot. Wow. Okay. So who yeah. puts this one on? Let's just jump in. We haven't seen each other for a few weeks, just a couple of weeks. I know. Right? I know. Um, yeah. In, yeah. Since you were in New Zealand. And since then you've been to Sweden and back. Yeah, so I was only at home for about 10 days and then I went to Sweden. So um, it was booked quite a long time ago. So long before um, New Zealand asked me to come. Uh, And like, so it's organized by this incredibly lovely American lady. Um, And we sort of had a bit of a joke. She also had a bit of a joke about it because she's very much an extrovert. And you could tell it was organized by an extrovert. So I struggled a little bit on the last day because um, so in the morning we had like round robin, like speed dating with the expert. And so I was sat on the table with about 10 brand new to me people and they got to ply me and just me with questions for 20 minutes. And then we did that four times back to back. And then I in had a room, to teach. In a room with other people too? Like are there other... So loud. I had to put my... Um, audio what are they called I'm sorry I'm the really, loops been a long, loops thank yeah. you yeah it's been a long day today as well also I'm still tired from the weekend because it's only Tuesday I'm um, having so a I had heart my palpitations in. thinking about doing I, that kind of thing yeah and then I had to teach immediately without a break so much so that I was like listen I've had a baby I'm gonna have to go pee before I start this next hour and 20 long session so I was literally like back to back for three hours um, without a break and I was slurring my words by the end of the presentation because I was that fucked um, so that's kind of a lesson for me about how much I can tolerate and uh, yeah it was it was a lot I think I underestimate like I'm not 20 anymore and it's really horrible to admit that but like I think I'm learning that I'm actually not 20 anymore <laughs> it, it, uh, it, it gets easier to learn that. I honestly think I was thinking about this just the other day, like in my thirties, when I started to realize, cause you're what, like mid to late thirties right now, 37. Yeah. yeah. 37. That's when it started to really bother me that I wasn't in my twenties oh, anymore. God, it's but, so horrible. But it's, it was a horrible, it was a horrible thing. I'm still not recovered from having that realization, but in my early fifties now, it's almost a, like I can laugh about it a little bit like, oh, I am I am going to go a little bit. I'm going to go a little bit at a slower pace. You know, I am going to not want to do absolutely everything on the menu at all times. Yeah, it gets easier. I'm still, That's what I'm saying. It I, gets easier. Yeah, I hope so, because I am definitely resisting. I have to say yeah. it's like the the tug push pull moment of, oh, yeah, our body's not in the best condition right now. And Maybe if it was, I could do a little bit more, but realistically, I can't really do everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, how how cool though. I mean, I'm sorry about all that extroversion that you are now recovering from. What did you teach? Uh, so I taught a class on the senses, like sensory writing, a class on um, unlikable characters. I was on a, actually... I was very naughty um, and I realised that they had a panel that said um, trad, indie and self-publishing, but all the people on the panel were agents. So I sort of dropped in and I asked the question, oh, who's your indie author on the panel? And they were like, oh, doesn't it like we've got one? And then I got a phone call later um, saying, would you be on the panel? And I was like, yes, I would actually genuinely love to be on the panel. And I did love being on the panel. The Um, least um, able to talk about the indie self-publishing space would be agents. They do not understand. And I love my agent, God bless, but she does not. Everything I ever tell her about indie blows her mind. Yeah. And so yeah. I was the naughty kid on the panel. <laughs> you were like, I think I was okay, the entertainment but... value. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, do you know what? It was actually lovely. And they were all, re- what, funnily enough, one of the agents I knew, because I met her at a Jericho thing, and they were all really good natured about it. And we oh, all had good. a bit of a laugh. And they all yeah. kind of knew that I'd be like, you know, playing devil's advocate or whatever. And actually, it was very friendly. But yeah, it was actually a wonderful conference. It was a, like the location is lovely. The people are lovely. And it was a really nice bit of conference where nobody knew who I was. Um, so that was cool as well. Is that possible? Um, yeah. Somebody knew who you were. A, a couple, we've got a mutual friend, actually. Your who? copy editor was there. <gasps> Katrina! Yeah, oh. your copy editor was there. Oh, so, wonderful. So yeah, it was lovely to meet her. Um, the best. Yeah, and yeah, so there were uh, like a couple of people, but yeah. I mean, it was it was actually really friendly as well and just like a really welcoming environment, probably because it was run by an extrovert. <laughs> well, also, it sounds like you went to re- two... I don't, we haven't talked about how we felt about the New Zealand conference, but I just thought it was, it was so lovely and small and well-run and so friendly. And perhaps you went to two small, well-run, friendly conferences. And honestly, those can sometimes be hard to find. You can go to, I've been to a few small conferences that were so small, they didn't really know what they were doing. And I've been to big conferences, which are just, you know, hard in many different ways. Um, But it sounds like you had a good experience. How did you find, how did you find New Zealand? Oh my God. Oh my God. Let's start with work first. Let's start with work. How did you find the home? I loved it. Yeah, I loved it. I was, so the interesting thing, like, because obviously we know that I like speaking, right? I love the stage. The stage loves me. We, it's a mutual appreciation society. However, so true. It, this whole realizing I'm not 20 anymore is really frightfully boring because what, what happened is that I got super anxious, as I always do. And kind of the physical toll on my body is now becoming a little bit more apparent than it ever used to be. Um, so I did spend a good portion of the weekend, quite anxious, quite nervous, quite, you know, dealing with like the physical reactions of that kind of stuff. Um, you know what, may, aside, I, may I interrupt you and, and just say that with yeah. every once in a while, you know, I saw you multiple times at the conference and, and each time you said you, you were nervous. And I hope you know that there was at least one person and it was me who was dying inside for you because I feel, <laughs> I feel the same level of anxiety and people go, Oh, you're so cute. You're going to be great. Oh, you know, they right? Do not understand no, that it, no. that you can't breathe, that you're pooping, that you're, yeah. you know, just, So anyway, I, I had you. Yeah. I, I knew. Yeah. I knew. Yeah. But like you said, it was so intimate, so cozy, so friendly, so lovely. And I fell in love with Wendy Vella. I think I have a massive crush on Wendy Vella now. And, oh my and let me just God. confess to you, everyone she's has a massive She's the funniest crush. person. She's like she the only so named funny. writer in my in in my memoir Unstuck because she came to have coffee with me. You know, and when we I'm just we we love her. I watched her change a friend of mine's life with a, like one sentence one day. Isn't she brilliant? And if people don't know Wendy Bella, she's on um, the Spa Girls podcast, which Sasha and I have both been on probably multiple times. Yeah, and she is so snarky and like sweary and just blunt to the point of like, like my sides hurt (laughs) from laughing and smiling. And I just want her to be my friend and I'd very much like it if she moved to the UK. (laughs) <laughs> she'll be right over no, yeah okay, cool. <laughs> family whatever <laughs> yeah um but yeah it was really nice to spend time with you and with AK and to meet your friends as well and Lala and Helen Shoira as well oh, it was amazing it was so oh, I tell you I I really wish I get really emotional because I really desperately wish I had more people on this continent, mm-hmm. like all the best people. And they just, why does everybody live abroad? Like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, you know, you know what I mean? There are people here, but I do. Okay. I and just... let me take a moment because we did not, we, I talked to you before you did your big keynote um, on the last episode, but I mean, everybody tells you this and you hear this all the time, but you fucking killed it. You know that. I mean, you uh, have to know that you, you made everyone emotional. You made everyone believe in themselves. You reminded us why we're doing this. And you were so, you went so intimate with your story. And even I, who know your story perhaps better than the average bear, was so moved. You did such a fucking great job. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Oh, it's so uncomfortable. <laughs> Hearing <laughs> lovely things. Like it's... <laughs> 
I don't know. It's really hard, isn't it, to like, because you just feel like it's just your story. It's just, yeah. it's just what you know. So, it, so there's that. But um, yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm just going to say I, thank you because it's good. Good job. Well, and, yeah. and you're just an okay. automatic. You're an automatic. You cannot help it. You are hilarious when you speak. But people, <laughs> when 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 you hear Sasha speak after after she has planned to speak, and the jokes are not only written well but timed well. You're unstoppable. You know what I mean? You're that that's, that's just unstoppable. performance though. That's just yeah, yeah. that's just like I don't know, like you know, I was a child actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think some yeah. of it comes from that. But also the other thing that um I think when when you're on stage, I don't know if you feel like this, but you go a little bit audience blind. So you oh, kind 100%. of are like looking There's no one at there. them. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're like looking at them and you know that they exist, but also you can't hear anything and you can't really see any expressions. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So you never really know if people are laughing at your jokes and you're just fucking hoping that they are. And um, also added to that, I got back from New Zealand, went straight to the opticians and my glasses were so bad that I almost was not legal to drive. So also that might have been why I couldn't see anybody. <laughs> well, and also, wasn't this the first time that that your family had been in the audience for something like oh this? Oh my God. Atlas killed me like that was like okay obviously it's very lovely that all the writers enjoyed it but my son like came running up to me at the end of it and it was just a life but I think that is possibly like that's a memory I'm gonna die with like that moment when he ran up to me his face beaming and like gave me a massive hug and he was so proud of me and like that more than anything meant the entire world like it was he's, so lovely for him to he see saw me he saw me right after and, and I said how what did you think he says I feel inspired. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, I love him. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> oh, okay. So now tell us about your New Zealand experience. How did you find it? Oh, I guess we talked about, maybe we talked about this a little bit. I feel like episode. I do all the talking yeah. though. Um, New the Zealand. Interesting one. Uh, New Zealand was just like extraordinary. It's it's not real. Is it real? Yeah, Is no, it visited feel, yeah. real? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like you no photograph will ever do it justice. Like that it is genuinely a slice of heaven and paradise and the edge of the earth, quite literally. Like you, no bloody wonder they set Lord of the Rings there. It is like every fantasy writer's dream come true. Um and at one point. I literally felt like I had visual images and memories leaking out of my ear holes because I could not stuff any more visual delights into my brain (laughs) anymore. And I was like sort of desperate to like hold all of these images. And it's just like unspeakably beautiful it is it is a straw it's just yeah it is I don't know it doesn't it doesn't go away I've been here three years and so I I have done I've I've also like you I have not had I didn't even have 10 days I had like one day at home after the conference before my sister got here so then we've been going hard and we just got off the road last night from a five-day drive all around the North Island and we did all the things and it was so beautiful that it started to rain at one point I was like thank God, it's going to rain because I can't look at any more beautiful scenery. But then it didn't rain. It kind of went misty, misty, and And the sun was shining through. It was more beautiful. We were going through this rather ugly section while it was raining, and it was incredible. I was like, I am exhausted. I am exhausted. I, it was exhausting because I'm a narrator. I'm a narrator of what I see too. My sister yes. don't do this, but yes. I'm like, look at the cloud. Look at that. Yep. Did you see that? Did you see that <laughs> lamp? And all the baby lambs are being babied right now. I were they might not have quite sprung when you were here, but now there's baby. There lambs were a few. Been, it's like, ridiculous. Uh, now there's the oh yeah yeah. It, it's a lot. New Zealand is a lot, <laughs> and like you could have done, we could have done so much longer. Um, but also okay. So the other thing. I always thought growing up that I would be a nomad because there is nothing I love more than traveling, nothing I love more than seeing stuffing. I think this is that's where I'm an input whore is with the travel. Absolutely. Um, But I was 
absolutely exhausted from all of the hotel hopping, all of the like staying here for two, never really being able to unpack. So like it was a delightful holiday in in one respect, but I'm absolutely ready for a beach holiday where I lie and do nothing and everybody cooks for me uh, next time. Uh, yep. But I think... Yeah. So it was it was really interesting. And actually, we broke our son because on <laughs> when we were at the conference, um, Chloe asked him, oh, you know, what would you like to do today? And he sort of like his eyes widened just a little bit. And she was like, oh, and he was she was like, do you do you not want to do anything? And he was like, so for listeners, I'm like shaking my head. He was like, no, I'm so tired. Can we please just stay here? That's so it actually broke wonderful. Him. Well Isn't it? done. I know. I was so fucking smug. <laughs> I have I seen like, that. I... That'll learn you for getting up at five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the moving around is exhausting. Like I said, we we there. No, I put in I put in the book like we did the digital nomad thing for six months, which I thought I'd always want to do. It's horrible it's ho- yeah. i mean it's great it's great yeah but um oh and then you and chloe when we went out to dinner and then i i heard you talk about it other places too this hot holiday i i realized that we have never had a hot holiday i mean we had a one hot holiday i'm gonna say 15 years ago we went for three days to hawaii that's it that's it and we were and i demanded one quiet day and then we went snorkeling one day and then i demanded another quiet day so that's in our the history of our relationship. If everyone could see Sasha's face, she just froze. I just broke Sasha. So I did. I came home and I do this thing called profit first, which I've talked about before. It's a way of managing money. And you always put profit for yourself aside from your money before you do anything, before you take, pay taxes, you pay a certain percentage aside. And you're supposed to use it on something that is not business related. It can be pleasure. It could be whatever it is, but you know, recently we haven't been super flush. So I keep pulling that money in and using it, you know, for bills and stuff. And this time I looked at the amount in the account and I thought that is going for a hot holiday. I have booked an eight day trip to Rarotonga, which is in the Cook Islands. And you can drive around it on a motorcycle in 45 minutes. That's how big it is. That's, it's just a little circle in the sea and there's apparently nothing to do there. And, and eight days, eight days of Snor- snorkeling gently and reading that's all we're gonna do and that's so literally every hot holiday normally what happens is if we go for 14 days i read 13 or 14 books like that is <gasps> that's it that's what i do it's I just my two melt it. yeah like that's why we do it so chloe really needs to like lie down because she's incapable of sitting still and that's the only time she'll sit still is like if we go somewhere where there's a swimming pool and a sun lounger and then atlas you know we always stay right by the pool and then atlas can get in and out in and out in and out and usually there's kids there or whatever so um yeah that's why we do it because everybody gets what they want (laughs) oh that is i can't wait so that is booked that is the first week of december Oh, so amazing just a, just a you'll have to just thank like you. cram you now get to go book shopping digital i know shopping. i know right? like, i'll need eight books yeah <laughs> well i'll need i'll need 15 amazing. because like you know I, I i always start one and then i'm not quite in the mood which is why yeah. the, libra- the library is so good for a person with so much adhd as me is that i could just have all the books <laughs> and i don't have to finish any of them if i don't want to oh god i wish i i i need more of that because i I like I, I get so competitive that I have to like beat my Goodreads thing. And if I mm-hmm. then don't finish a book, it then doesn't count. And it's horrible. That's well, why I story... don't let myself go past 25 percent. If I it's usually about 25 percent. If I don't love it by 25 percent, more like 10 percent. But if I don't love it, love it, love it by 25 percent, I don't keep going because otherwise I will get I want to hit the good Goodreads as well. Yeah. And um, yeah. but even then I get I get so mine. crabby about those 25 percent. They all add up to books that I'm not logging. Can I tell you a secret? Yep. I read two I read two books recently that were pre-pubs and they're incredible and I can't wait to tell people about them. But I was so upset about my good reads that I spent, you know, because I read the whole books and I read them in detail and in order to give feedback kind of thing that I logged to Anne of Green Gables books in my good reads that I oh, didn't read. Yeah, I used to do that. Yeah, yeah, I used to do book. that. This book is yeah. about to come out. Yeah, exactly. I I have done that. I mean, if I know they're coming out in the same calendar year, I won't and I'll wait till they're out and then I'll add it onto my Goodreads. But if they come out the following year, I'll usually add something. One is, one isn't. And the one that is coming out this year isn't up on Goodreads yet. So I'll swap it at some point. That is ridiculous that we do that. 
but is I have it, to do is it. it. I want to I hit a hundred. I, I fucking I know you always, you always blow it out of the water. I want to hit a hundred books this year and I don't usually hit a hundred. You're, you're, well, you say that I'm so behind on my Goodreads list this year. I'm actually in danger of missing it, missing my hundred. Well, maybe, yeah. maybe and we I, also and I did like need a friendly little last year. competition. How, how many have you read? Oh, let's God, let's, let's pull it up. It. Let's pull this bitch up. Oh no! Oh no! Um, oh no! My keyboard's oh, no. not working. How inconvenient! You're gonna, you're gonna kick, you're gonna kick my ass. I'm only at fifty four, and we're more than. Oh, I think so. you've read more than me. Oh <gasps> no! Yeah, no. probably. Yeah. Hang on a second. My my keyboard's being unhelpful. <laughs> Why like, is it not working? <laughs> Competition. Oh, my keyboard's it... <laughs> broken. Okay, talk to me about the best book. You, or talk, talk to me about what work you're doing whilst I try and get this bloody. Well, I haven't done work much there. work because I was, I was um at the conference and then I was another four and a half days um with my friend down in Christchurch, so that was fabulous. So I was gone for eight days and then my sister came in almost immediately. You've got the number, don't you? I can see it on your face. I do. What is it? Yeah, <laughs> forty six. Oh, you better catch up. I know. I am nineteen <laughs> books behind schedule. I think I'm only two books behind. Yeah, and I oh. think part of it, and the other thing is, I've read so much with my ears this year and not with my um, eyes. I think I reckon probably half that list is with my ears. That's great. There's, 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 there's not a me. lesser thing. No, it's not, because I still get the story. Uh, what it doesn't do is it doesn't give me energy pennies the way that reading with my eyeballs does. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So I still get story. But also I don't read as in depth because I'm usually doing 500 other things at the same time. That's exactly. So for me, I've been doing more audiobooks this year than I ever have before, but I only do it when sitting in, sitting in place and sewing. Yeah. And then I am concentrating as fully. I can't even walk around the house with a, with fiction in my ears. Cause I, I need, I need to focus. Yeah. Yeah. I sort of trained myself up to be able to keep track with one part of my brain whilst my hat mm. like whilst I'm cooking or something usually mm-hmm. um but yeah I definitely so okay so I think I know what happened and I was very very good reading right up until the fact that I started writing the vampire series mm. and then because I hadn't made my mind up what was coming I couldn't read on because I didn't need to read any more vampire fiction Uh, because I already had what I needed to do and so I then like usually I'm competition led so usually I'm reading comp titles and because I didn't know what was coming I then had no motivation to read so I think that's what happened and combined with being so busy with the growth and the business structure changes not you know try you know all the rest of it not having any systems in place um and then I brought a load of books. I took myself to London the other day uh, just to go book shopping. That was it. Mm-hmm. I literally went to London to go book shopping. And I brought a load of books thinking that I was going to do this series and this series. And then I got back and I I was like, I was in coaching. And I said to Ellie, I'm like, Ellie, I'm still not reading. And she was like, mm, have you ever thought that maybe you hadn't actually made up your mind about what you were going to write next? And I was like, no, I've, I already know. Like, this is what I think the market's going to do. Rah, 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 rah. And she was like, mm, but have you made up your mind? And I was <laughs> like, oh, no. And then I was like, well, what I want to do is blah, 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 blah. But I can't do it because this wine, blah, 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 all these excuses. And she was like, mm, mm, I'm hearing a lot of what I can't do, but what can you do? And I was like, oh, write that book. And she was like, yes. And now I want to read. So there we go. Oh. I think that is what happened. Also, let me point out too, like that the, when you wrote this first, you know, the first Ruby Row books, you you wrote them because you wanted to, not because you thought the market would blow up. You did not, in fact. Well, what that's true, but I wrote them as to market as you I did. Could. You did. So I wrote the, did. yeah. So I wrote the thing that I wanted to write. Yes. Under the parameters of, okay, I think this is, you know, like if it's nine, if it's, if there's 10 things to market, I wrote like eight to market and two that were me kind of thing. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so have you now decided? You, you probably can't tell us, but you have decided. I will tell you after. I will tell you after what I'm doing. It's probably, I'll probably mention it before too long, but you know, when it's like really precious, you do, you just you do to... keep, you, te- you do keep really good secrets because you, you keep them and you tell a select few, but then you can't help telling everybody else in like 17 minutes. So don't worry, everybody. <laughs> you will, you will very soon find out. 
listen my activator feels like that 17 minutes is like two years so you know but also I use it as a marketing tactic because then I get like the readers wanting to know what I'm gonna do and I'm like oh no I can't possibly tell you of course I can fucking tell you but I'm not going to (laughs) so yeah I'm just an evil dick tease or maybe I should say badge tease sorry everybody my language I'm so sorry (laughs) you're like our languages we use all the words we use all the words yeah (laughs) <laughs> like all the words yes. yes but as as um as to where i am i have done very little because i have basically been on vacation since you left yeah, i have just you had a you had a retreat didn't you how did it go yeah, we, had a, we had a retreat it was great but but i i will confess it was fantastic it was i think it was the best conference i've ever been to and the best retreat i've ever been to because for the first time in my life i just allowed myself to do what i want and i and i would go to even when i'm with my bestie heart beloveds here, you know, in this retreat, I'd still be, it's be like 8, 20 at night. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to bed. And I would swallow the FOMO. I'd go to bed, but then I'd hear them go to bed shortly thereafter. Cause I'd kicked it off. Like, oh, we're all going to go to bed and read. Cause our, all of our social batteries were drained, but I just kept, and I also infected them with the way that I do writing retreats, the way that I do writing retreats. I write enough in my job that I don't need to go away and like write copious amounts of writing to catch up. Right. When I do writing retreats, it's about filling the well. It is about reading and journaling and doing fun, delicious, beautiful things. So we did things like we went to the spa. We ate. We all got massages. We ate incredibly. We did it. We did an escape room, which oh I've never. God, three of the four so of us fun. had never done. We just we just played we just oh. played and we laid around and we talked and we you know did the plotting revolution and we did tarot cards and and it was really i bet none of them were as good as my tarot cards though no nobody (laughs) nobody nobody can complete those tarot cards that was unbelievable i still can't get over it i need to take notes on mine too i need to go back and do that (laughs) i need to write those down um and then and then i came home for a couple of days and just like cleaned up the the you know the bomb site and then my sister came in and it's just been great. She's here um, until for like another five days. Um, so it's just been go, go, go and host, host, host. And I've been doing, I've been doing the bare amount of worky work to keep afloat. Like I have been actually on top of my email for the first time in my life. And, and I'm opening classes because um, they'll start next week. Uh, so those, I think they're, I think they're almost full or full. I haven't even checked on that yet. I but I'm um, like doing yeah. classes. I wasn't going to do classes, but I can't quite afford not to. So instead of three times a year, I I did this one. And then I had a good seven months off or something like that. Okay. Six months off. And then I'm starting another round. And then I won't do another round until probably mid-2025. So I'm just trying to give myself more time Slightly off. Longer. Between. I, yeah. I was trying to yeah. get all the way through the year and then start in January again. But I couldn't. I can't. I can't get there. I need the... I need the the money. So it's great. Yeah. And you know, I love, I love doing it. You, so. I was just about to say, you love teaching anyway, and you love it's, the community. So, and I, and I have had so much time off of it that of the 90 days to done a 90 day revision that I'm just, I can't, I can't wait to start talking about it again. You know, somebody yeah, asked and me a I question. I can see that little glint yeah, in your eye as I'm, well, like the excitement to have the people yeah, again. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I just saw somebody, cause I, you know, I, I just saw somebody sign up that I have, that I'm so excited to to be with. She's been in other parts of my community before. And I love seeing that one. Like, oh my gosh, I get to work with that person now in this. I could just, I, I can't wait. My my superpower, as you know, is drawing toward me incredible people. That is, You have connectedness, right? Yeah, I do. And I never understood what that was before I realized that I draw to me people that I just want to be with. I, I, never, have stu- well, I never have students that I don't want to be with because um, I get rid of them. I just I, I have this I have this super secret screening that happens before that nobody will ever know about because those people probably don't listen to this podcast anyway you know like but yeah if they if they, I have I have insisted on phone calls and every once in a while people will get in just because I have just a good hit like I'll, I'll google them I will I will I will investigate people coming into my classes like I am going to date them I'm not no kidding. No way. Oh, all of one, them. All of the students. Absolutely. 100%. And if I can't find anything about you online, usually I can do it by digging. Because it is so, I guess I'm 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 bragging about how I draw the good ones to me. And then I'm like refuting that by saying, maybe I draw all of them to me, but then I only pick the ones that I know will create an incredible 
warm, loving atmosphere and safe. Safety's safety's primary over even writing in my classes. If somebody, I have only ever had to kick one person out ever for making somebody feel very unsafe and they were gone. And I always keep money in the, in the teaching bank. Like I always keep refund money. You will get all of your money back and you are gone. Oh my God. I love that. Um, rather than pick, what about you only form connections with? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Only the people that, that, yeah. that I know will form the people. beautiful connections with other people. Yeah. Because it's not Aww. about me. It's about the connections in the classes. And they're so, so fun. So I can't wait. So that'll be I love funny. that. But I had no idea you did that. Yeah. I don't think amazing. I've ever I don't think I've ever admitted it. You know? <laughs> and then I do get people word of mouth. Like, you know, my cousin's gonna take this from my best friend and I say, Oh, do you love him? And they say, Oh, Rachel, you'll love him. Great, you're in. I don't do any sleuthing at all. But if it's a brand new to me name, first I start with have we emailed before? What have those emails looked like? Have we, you know, then I, and then I go further afield if I need to, but a lot of times that's true. I'll look in my email and we have been emailing back and forth for years and years. And I say, oh, this is that person. Oh, great. I get to work with them. Fantastic. Oh, I just love that. I, I would never have thought to do it like that. No wonder you have such positivity and like joyful experience. Really healthy boundary examples. I think that is like yeah. a wonderful boundary to have. And like, I'm really trying to be more aware of boundaries. Like, this is why I lo- like love Jo because she has such incredible boundaries. Yeah. And I try really hard to learn that. But you have to kind of shuck off the people pleasing and the like, feel like you are worthy of having that boundary, if you know what I mean. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. So I just, I love that. I love 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 you for telling me that because I will take that and I'm going to store it and I'm going to keep it and remember it for time in the future when I'm in need it I'm I'm glad well the thing about boundaries too and we've talked about this a little bit before you and I I don't know if we've done on the show but they are they are the opposite of people pleasing like Mm. people pleasing will never allow you to set a boundary and when you set a boundary you will let someone down so you have to and I am also a a very high people pleaser. Um, so getting comfortable with just making people sad sucks, but oh, it's so I'm worth- uncomfortable even doing it. <laughs> it's so worthwhile in the end. But I don't know if I don't know if you've talked about this on the show recently. I can't I can't remember if it was just in person, but like you have had to do some things where you can't respond to everybody now. Is that correct? I now have a social media manager. So tell us about I'm that. Like- I, I don't know if you've talked about it on your show because I'm always behind. So I now have a team of four. Um, Nobody is full time. Right. But I'm probably approaching the equivalent of a full time person, I suspect, Mm. across all the amount of hours that everybody does. Um, So I've got one person doing the front end of the podcast and pitching people or accepting pitches. Uh, I've got one person doing customer service on Shopify the back end of the podcast, so liaising with the guests after they've been on, scheduling all of the content, and then they also schedule all the social media. Then mm. I've got a social media manager who does like the strategy and the content plan and then um, then gives that kind of content to the scheduler, but also writes the captions. And then this person also goes in and does a lot of engagement. So it may or may not be me replying mm-hmm. in Instagram in particular now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, she's very good at leaving things that she feels like are personal conversations or that needs a response from me. And then I will go in and deal with it. But also she's a pit bull. So like there have been a few things in my DMs where she's like, not sure about this and I'm like do do you feel like you could you know maybe respond for me uh and she's very good at like drawing the line down or you know that kind of stuff and then and that is so good because that's the that is the kind of response that takes the most energy is responding to something I don't even want to call it negative but um inflammatory people will just drop inflammatory things just to see what happens to see what kind of bomb goes off and oftentimes the bomb has gone off and other people are responding already in your comments. And that's when I can feel my heart rate go up. And that's when it, it will it will take away from whatever else I'm doing that day. Well, the other interesting thing for me is that just knowing she will do it. Yeah. 
is actually sometimes enough for me to go, yeah. oh no, actually I can deal with it. You know, or, oh. you know, and, and I mean that emotionally and psychologically rather yeah. than physically responding. Like yes. it might be that I still say, oh yeah, just say this. But knowing that she will be the pit bull for me if I need her yeah. to is is really comforting and takes kind of a weight off your shoulders. And then the other thing I outsourced is my inbox. So I no longer have control of my inbox. And it was the best fucking decision I've ever made in my entire life ever across anything. Okay, can we just, can, I'm sorry, everybody listening, because <clears throat> we're about to go into the weeds here. Because <laughs> you know that my inbox is the bane of my existence. And oh. it's probably the most stressful thing. I mean, God God bless. That's, I love that that's my most stressful business thing. But, um, but I don't understand how to do it because my inbox goes back 20 years to people I've been dealing with. And I can know at a glance, like this person needs this soft touch. Whereas like, how do you, how do you do it? Does it come back with her? Just, can you walk me through it? The process you use. So what we did is I gave her access to everything. Yep. And then I created a new secret email address that like maybe three people have. I think you've got it. Joe's got it. And like my agent's got it. I don't even know if I have it. I don't even know if maybe, well, I will give it to you if you don't, but yeah, (laughs) yeah, exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. The people that, you know, and then like my accountants have it. I've changed it on um, most of like the bank account stuff, most of where there's any kind of legal responsibility Mm. or, or, you know, then it has to come to me. Yeah. Everything else has been rerouted to her and she, (laughs) this is so funny because it was a miscommunication of the most hilarious proportions. So we kind of agreed that we would, (laughs) we would co-work on the inbox for like a week. And then um, at the end of that week, she was going to kick me out of my emails and redirect everything to her new email address. So she's got a new one um, that kind of like sucks all of the emails in. Yes. And um, I was like, yep, yep, yep. Thinking that I had more time than I did. And then she just kicked me out. And I was like, for a couple of days, I was like, oh my God, like I've got through all my emails. It's amazing. They're so low. Because she turned it on and it (laughs) all went to her. (laughs) Which is good because you were probably thinking like, well, do I need her? Like, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, oh my God, like, I don't know what's happened, but I'm like so efficient at my emails now. Um, And then, so, and the other thing just to say about that is that she went away last week and turned on the emails back to me. No, 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 never do I ever want the inbox. I got nothing done, nothing, because I felt the physical weight. It's a physical pressure on me having to deal with that inbox and I hate it it is my least favorite task I have to say it has been the hardest psychological exercise to let go because I am a control freak yeah we had to like agree you know certain things but the thing is the person who is doing this is so fucking good at her job Mm. she is so efficient, so switched on that she has resolved things preemptively. And then like three days later when I'm like, oh, we should really do this. She's like, I've already done it. And I'm like, oh my fucking God, I love you. You are never allowed to leave me. Um, Yeah. And, you know, so she's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And she will forward in the morning anything from the day before that needs me to handle it. Uh-huh. And then everything else she deals with, she responds to everything. She will Did you give her canned, like canned no. things to say <clears throat> when things happen. Like, cause I, I have canned things. Like when somebody, you know, does join something, I hit a canned thing in, in Gmail that says, you know, so, hi, this is how you join. This, this is how you do that. This is how you, yeah. So Becca, who deals with the customer service end of Shopify does mm. have canned responses, Yeah, but um, Petra, who's dealing with my inbox, they're more nuanced, but also, you know, mm. she used to be a really like, you know, head of blah, 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 whatever, like sort of customer service, something rather in a, in a big corporate. So she's so clever and so switched on and so bloody good at what she does. She doesn't need the canned responses. Um, I mean, there are certain things that we talked about, you know, like if this happens, we do why, you know, if this comes in, this is where you send it. So there are certain things, you know, like silly little things like book vault receipts. Right. You know, every time you sell a, 
you know, it, they charge you for printing and it's another receipt. You can get 10, 15, 20 of these bloody emails a day. They all have to be turned into PDFs and they all have to be sent to, um, you know, your accounting software because they don't come in as PDFs. Anyway, so, you know, she knows who to, it's, so it's, a lot of like systems and processes, but it took two straight weeks. The last two weeks before I came to New Zealand, I stopped writing and it took two weeks to sort out. Oh but, my gosh. Yeah. Because I think yeah. you and I use our in inboxes the same way in that I am always trying to get to zero because if it is in my yep. email, it is a yep. thing to do. And a lot of them are the little things like the the accounting things. I need to write this yeah. thing off. I need to do, I need to, I need yep. to take the time to go in here and I'm only going to do it when I'm sitting at the computer, but then you open it up and it's all there. Yeah. Or like somebody needs, like your agent needs a, a, an answer to X or you need to send graphic to Y or you need mm -hmm. to, you need to make also little things like, um, you know, people emailing, would you speak here? Would you speak there? And she will turn around and go, you don't need to do this. This is a no for, you know, do do you agree? This is a no. This And I'm like, I'm a, like, never leave me. Never that leave me. Brilliant. Yeah. 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 She also manages the Kickstarter. So that has been incredible. Oh my goodness. You are kicking ass. Well, she's kicking ass and I'm just <laughs> running to try and keep up with her. <laughs> she's okay. Amazing. So let's, uh, let's update with what we're doing. I am. I am uh, when I get back to work, which which should be next week when my sister leaves, I will be in hard on the last revision of the fix, and then I will decide what to do with it. So that's my next thing is the is the big fix book, getting that off my desk. How what long do you think you? that will take? Like, will that I want you have finished that by the time we speak next time, or I would like to. Uh, yes, I'm just going to say yes because this is a amazing. It's it's kind of a well, it is rather. No, you know what? I'm going to try to do that. I just need to get it off my plate. That's been one that's been sitting there. So. That's mine. I'm going to work very hard at it. How about you? What are you doing? Because I always lose track. I'm always such a good uh, person to talk to because I don't remember anything. <laughs> I know. And then I get excited to tell you all I've got. <laughs> uh, so three main things from me. Um, the first one is finishing draft of book three. The second one is launching Kickstarter 2. And what is in Kickstarter 2 again? Um, so it's it's technically books two and three, but if you didn't get book one, you can do the book you can do the the full three bundle. Perfect. So yeah. this is another we, way into that. Yeah, and we have an insane number of followers. Like, I, so the first Kickstarter, the pre-launch, I think I got about two hundred and eighty, maybe two hundred and eighty-nine followers. Uh -huh. We're in excess of five hundred. So I'm extremely like. I, I got excited and now I'm just shitting a brick. So when you say that Petra then is going to be organizing that, is she going to be also <clears> organizing <throat> the the promotion side during the three weeks or a month that you do? Or is that all you? Because that, that's the hard part. Yeah, I mean, so I'm like directing the strategy, deciding what to kind of include, but she has done all of the graphics, all of the, like, oh, so fabulous. any copy that's gone in my newsletter, like about the Kickstarter, yeah. she's organized that. She's done kind of like a plan for content, but then because because I am a face, I have to record the content. And if it's TikTok, I have to load it. If it's Instagram, it all gets sent to the team and they deal with it. So a little bit of both, I would say. And then like we had a meeting this morning and I came up with some new ideas and she came up with some new ideas. So yeah, a bit of both. I mean, she's done a lot of the leg legwork of like creating it, actually physically creating it on Kickstarter, research, contacting people, organizing, you know, the covers, the the art, the everything. So yeah, I could not, I would not have been doing a second Kickstarter if it were Because it is, it does turn into a full-time job while that is, while that, that building is going on. Yeah. And yeah. the more you if you're number one competition, you have to outdo the previous ones. I I so, have absolutely know. no doubt that you will. Like, I, I feel like you could fall asleep at the wheel for this one. Maybe not the next one, but you could fall asleep at the wheel for this one and you will outdo it. Well, I don't know about that. Because the <laughs> thing is, no, and no, genuinely, and this is where my nerves, is, nerves are coming from. Um, it's that it, this is no longer just a one book Kickstarter. This is at minimum two books, which means it's twice the price of the last one, essentially. And if you do all three, it's three times the price of the last one. So the the, the cost per customer is going to be 
a lot higher. It will and that be, makes me nervous. It will be so interesting to see what your average cost per customer rises yeah. to. Yeah. And I do know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking out my ass. I do know that that kind of pricing is wildly more elastic on Kickstarter. It's a yeah. selling platform. You're not asking for, this is not a handout or a donation. This, these are people who want to buy something special. Yeah. And we have but, sourced some incredible incredible products i might show you a couple after because yes, yes. that was it oh yeah and I then the not. last one is reading for the next series i have to make myself accountable for that because i'm gonna have to catch up now <laughs> i um i i would like to propose something to you which you'll probably hate and not do but could you consider lowering your goal a book on goodreads i know you want to punch me in the face but then you would hit it and then you'd probably get mad at it and then you'd read enough to get back up to your original Right. Anyway, but 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 I knowing that you will have to lower it because yeah. I can't bear to have a year where I haven't hit it. Exactly. Exactly. Um, because I in the last like however many years, seven, eight years I've been doing it, I've not failed to hit. And in the middle um, of a year is when you adjust it. The times I've adjusted it have been mid year. You don't want to do it in December because then it won't feel like it counts. Lower it. The now. only the only thing is if I lower it, then it won't tell me how far behind the original goal I am. Right. And I'm not quite ready to let go of that. (laughs) So I think what I need to do is just, so I've got two books I have to read for class and I have to like, even though I'm really enjoying them because there's a responsibility associated, I Mm. instantly find it harder to get through them. So Mm -hmm. I need to push myself through those and then see what happens with the new genre. And if I like devour them, then I probably won't change it. And if I don't, and I'm still struggling, I'll do something about it, I think. You have yeah. a plan. Good. I have a you plan. Have a yeah. Excellent I'm plan. I'm excited. I do. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, but yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, yay. Well, now we have to go because I need to hear all the, back, the vaccine stuff, which will be everyone. Everyone will know about soon. Soon enough. I know. It's so yeah, lovely to see you. Thank you for doing It's lovely to see you. I wish it was in person, though. I know. That was so fun. It was, it was so, so fun. fun. <laughs> I had to lower all the volumes on it so that we didn't like blow the speakers. I I don't, I don't re-listen to episodes, but I I will someday re-listen to that one because it was so stupid fun. It was hilarious. All All right, right, my love. See you soon. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Don't forget to tune in and subscribe on your podcatcher. And when you have a moment, please leave a review.